So we're gonna give her a go here. We got a boxed in ratchet wrench on the other end. And I'm gonna take the back two that are a nightmare out first. The reason I'm taking them out first is because the front two bolts will hold the strut in place and you won't be fighting with it. But when we go back in, we're gonna to want to probably put them in first only because putting them in first will mean that the threaded part is not jammed through and touching the uh, wiper cow. They're Teflon bolts, so got a little bit of grab. You can't just twist them out by hand. Good bad thing. Bad thing for us taking apart. Good thing for you that it won't come back out again. And there's nothing special about what I'm doing here. I mean, I hope I oh, got lucky. I got that off um, because, like I said, the wiper cow is right there. If you have a second person when you put this back together, it will definitely make life easier because you can put the bolts in place while taking it um, while putting the strut in. I lost that bolt. I didn't really lose it. Oh, you know what? I'll get a magnet hole. I want to show you it's out. I don't think I'm just fibbing. There you go. You got one out. There it goes. Um, that was easy enough. Now, the other one, I don't think I'm almost... No, I can't fit the box. I mean, I can't fit the ratcheting part on it. So this one's going to take some time. Um, first thing we got to do is crack it loose. So we want to get the best leverage we can. So we're not getting much movement out of this one. Uh, when I say movement, I mean getting like a quarter turn. Um, if you flip the wrench, you'll get a different angle. More one way, less another. Um, this is going to take a little more time to take it out this way. Um, you might want to spray some lube on it if you can. Uh, that might help it come out a little smoother. But reason for me doing it this way so I do not have to take out the wiper cow the wiper motor it's fun it's fun I'm not even sure that I'll be able to do the same on the driver's side but this is the passenger side so if you just have a broken spring or something and you're changing it for that reason and you're only doing one well then you know this is the way you can do it I might get to the other side and go I'm a JA because you know could have took the wiper cow out and saved a crap ton of time because it has to come out for this side anyway. But I already got one of the four bolts out. This one's moving pretty smoothly. I actually do want to spray this just because it'll make coming out a little bit easier. And we like easier. You might see it in the video, but I'm actually flipping the ratchet every time I pivot all the way because it changes and gives me a little more twist to it. Uh, oh, almost lost the wrench. You know what? I think I'm going to actually grab... I like the leverage I'm getting with this. I'm gonna grab a regular box then without the ratchet in, but that little bit of angle on the wrench actually gives me a little leverage. Just for craps and giggles, I'm gonna try to put this box end on. I'm pretty sure that the, yep, I was right. You're not getting it on because the uh, wiper cowl is 100% touching in the way. Now, for some reason, it doesn't let me take it all the way out <clears throat> because of the wiper cow. Um, what I'll do is take the other two out, and then the strut will drop down because I do have the car off the ground. And when it drops down, it'll be sitting down lower, and it won't be touching the cow. But this is all experimental first time for me doing this one. I might have done struts in one of these a couple 
years ago. I don't have too many friends that have these Lincolns. I tell friends to stay away from Lincolns and Fords that are used. Yeah, they're great cars when they're new. But as they get old, they like to fall apart. This thing's got a good bit of miles on it. Actually, I think this thing has a new motor in it. It's not a new motor, definitely a water pump. Um, we're about halfway done. It seems to be getting a little easier. And once the Teflon part of the nut clears, then you can twist it off by hand usually. Yeah, that stinks. I'm only getting like really, really small turn. I have seen these style wrenches that have a, a ratcheting part that slides on. I should probably grab a set of them. But, yeah, no. Hopefully, you ain't got to listen to me the whole time. If I put music to it or something. But, like I said in the last video I made today on the Mazda, I put a Mazda M or CX-9 dry shaft in. And uh, I've been getting a lot of people saying, oh, you don't do the whole job. Most of what I do is for people who are more advanced and just show them a shortcut. Because that's what I use it for. I don't normally need the whole job done for me. If it's something new, I like to watch a video that has the whole job, just because I like to see it start to finish what I might need or what they might not tell you in the beginning. Appreciate all the likes and subscribes. Appreciate everybody watching. I do actually make money now. If you're interested in doing it, monetizing videos are pretty cool. I don't make a killing. You do get ten ninety nine, dollars um, but I probably don't even, the money I rent my little space for, the phone bill, because I do all my videos on my phone, and you know, the, the stand, the camera's sitting on right now, they're all write-offs, wow, but I didn't like the world on fire last year, or any of the three years that I've been monetized. I more or less do this to help people, because when I first started, I probably made five or six hundred videos that weren't monetized. Never thought I'd get monetized. Never tried to get monetized. Told a friend of mine was like, "Yo, what are you gonna do?" And I was like, "You know what? It's a good question. I've been doing it for years. Let me let me look." And I looked, and I was like, "Hey, check it out. I can get monetized. I make my phone bill about. Oh, I make my part of my phone bill. My son's on my plan, so uh, yeah." I'm not making that much, but it's free money. I like to do it because I feel like I'm helping people. People have helped me in the past by me using their, their videos, so. So I'm getting less turn now because now I'm actually hitting the, um, hitting the wrench on the cowling making it harder. What I'm gonna do is crack these loose. I don't have to necessarily take these all the way out, but if I take these two and loosen them, it'll drop to as far as that bolt's already loose. Quite not even actually, because I still got the bottom bolts in. I just don't want all the weight on that one bolt and me trying to take it out. Um, there's the tension I don't need when it's already a pain in the butt to get to. You see the front bolt there lowering as I take this one loose. So, all right. So it didn't do much. But I'm gonna step on this. I stepped on the. Yeah, uh, I didn't give me much. on the, the uh, spindle. There's no wheel on it. Try to push it down. But they're falling out and they're out of the way, so back to business on this one. Oh, I think it's going to spin off freely now. 
see if we're gonna be able to spin it by hand. And the good thing that I know when I got my hand in here and I can spin it off by hand means I can put the new bolt on. There's things that matter because, you know, <laughs> can't put the new bolt on. Kind of SOL. And I got it off. There it goes. Boom. So, without taking out the cowling panel, I have successfully taken the left side upper strut mount bolts out. Um, and that's a plus. It's going to save us a lot of work. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and take them all out. Some of these are probably like, I'm bored. If there's a way to skip through the video to see what you want to see and what you need to see. Hopefully for the bored people's sake. And hey, I'm not mad if you need help. That's why I'm here. We're going to skip right over to the other side. I don't know if I've got a good angle underneath it there. Can you see my hand? Eh, kind of, sort of. Hey, if you see that battery turn on video, that's how nasty. I do notice one thing. It was a lot smoother when I sprayed them, so one, two, three, four. Sprayed them up nicely. Now, I actually took that spray and sprayed the top of that in here to see if I could get the... Um, Try to get a better angle for this. I guess I could put the phone differently. We're trying. We're trying. Bear with me here. Maybe I can get it this way. Let's see. There you go. I can see all the bolts. This one actually looks like it has cutouts. Oh, yes. Pretty sure. Oh, yep. It looks like this side actually has cutouts in the, um, in the, uh, cowling. Wiper cowling. For a ratchet wrench or for whatever. I don't know 100% I didn't get into the other side, but maybe I'll time lapse this video. Then you won't hear my great comments. Might make two videos. A short video and a long video. A short video will be for guys like me who just need... Oh, just need the help. Um, knowing that, yes, you can just take all 40s out from the top. It doesn't take a killer amount of time. You don't have to take the count out. And, and one of the reasons I don't want to take the cowl out is all this plastic crap after 10, 15 years. It, it, it's brittle. It likes to break. Clips don't come out. You know, just endless problems you might get from it. And I don't need any extra problems on taking apart Ford Lincoln Mercury. All right, so we got the inside one out. And again, I'm just do, by doing this with my hand, I know that I can get it out, and, and I know I can put it back in, because I got to put them back in. Um, it'll be fun. We'll get it. One more bolt out. There's an easy one real quick. So if you're just tuning in or you skipped ahead and you're trying to figure out what I'm doing, I am not taking the cow panel out in order to take out the struts. It's a couple more minutes work this way, but it's I think it should and probably is a lot more minutes less. What are we getting on that one? I don't know. This one like not. Oh, we're on it. We're on it. Listen, I'm not worried if this one gets jammed up it's in ratchet mode. Um, if for some reason I get stuck and I can't get the ratchet wrench out of there, I'll just take the front one out with a different wrench. And then when it drops out, I'll be able to get it out. Hope you guys can see this in the video. You can kind of see it. See my hand up there a little bit.
camera loves me. Likes to fall. So these ratchet wrenches have a swivel head on them. I think I showed you guys in the beginning, but when I get this bolt out, I'll show you. I say that. It's versus, like, <coughs> this one doesn't. This one's just solid. Let's see if I can muscle this one. Yep, a little ratchet will muscle it. I'm just doing this so the start can drop down. Might not even. Kind of like to the other side, but, you know. But, also show you that I can get that one out if I need to. Shame there's not more swing. I'm not complaining. That's almost a quarter turn. But these are pretty good gear wrench ratchet wrenches, isn't it? You hear the clicking? I like the clicking. Man, I hate long videos. Sorry, people. I'm not the speed demon I used to be. All right. And guess what? I don't think I can get this one off. Nah, it's coming off, I think. Yep, yeah, 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 there it goes again. Again, I want to make sure I can get them. It's going to be fun. And I always keep the old bolts because, uh, yeah, you never know. I might lose one of the other bolts trying to get it in. And I'll reuse the bolt. The world ain't going to end if I reuse one of these bolts. That one's right here. Got it. Found it. And last bolt of the four driver's side upper strut mount bolts, which are the ones that take the longest, I would say. Hey, you see that batter? That's lovely. If this is your car. If your car looks like this, get yourself some Coca Cola, Pepsi. I don't even have it in my fridge, so. Oh, this truck's dropping down. See the bolts going, the threads are falling through. So that would help me on this side if I needed it. Oh, and look, it dropped out. Sweet. So now we need a 10 millimeter ratchet, preferably. That's a wrench. We're gonna come on to the side now. And pretty sure it's a 10, yep. And we're gonna take that bolt out that holds the, uh, Oh, it's the brake line. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, geez. <clears throat> the whole bracket is bending. <sighs> Man, it's probably going to snap. Nope. But that whole bracket bent nicely. <laughs> That's crazy. It's in my way for that 22 that holds the thing on. But we'll get it out of the way in a second. So we got this bolt to take off, the two big bolts right there, bolts and nuts, and then the clip for the ABS unit. Mm, squeeze me. That comes out really easy, get it out of the way. Put the bolt somewhere you can find it later. The other side came out pretty easy. Let's see if I can get this side out the same. Nope, of course not. back in there uh. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing now let's see mm. yep so now for the 22s we're going to need 22 ratchet 22 socket uh, 22 wrench Maybe I'm not, I'm not gonna be wrong. Let me bend this bracket back out of the way. Hmm, they might actually be 21s. But these are definitely not 21s. Not 22s. So it's 21, I'll grab a 23. Uh, definitely not. That might even be welded to it. I don't know. 
find out in a second. We will attempt to take out the back side bolt. As you see, that bolt's spinning. Not the right size, but it works. And then see, I use this to push through. Uh, so, and guess what? The caliber bracket is in the bolt. The caliber bracket's in the way. But what we can do is the opposite, so we know it's a we have the bolt. So now we'll just go right to the toolbox, find the right socket, which is a 24. And since the caliper is in the way on the other side, we'll just take it out this way. Trying to get it all the way out so we can get this clip to come out easily. I don't want to damage it. Okay, we'll get a pair of pliers. Just gotta squeeze this puppy. And we're out. And guess what? The whole strut is out. And here you go again. So I can tell the struts are bad. Look at this. Grease and oil. That seal's wet. And there you go. I guess I'll bore you but you can watch me take the other side off also. I mean, why not, right? Different angle. That was front. This, that was back. This is front. Leave it as fun. We will not kill our tools. We grab a hammer. Usually, don't hit the end of a bolt with a hammer, but this one has such a shoulder on it. We're not going to damage it. Worst case scenario, if we do, we can grind it off. See that, like, half-inch shoulder? Oh, you know what? Let's leave that attached while we do this crazy brake line. I knew it was going to bend, too. Jesus. Wow. You know what? What we're going to do... I don't know if you can see it, looks like a little right, ten. Of course, I got a ten. Ten's worth in it. So we gotta get that out first. You ever have a uh, uh, something stuck in the socket you just take a hammer and hit it right here and have this against something and it usually falls out so now we're going to use this monster impact gun to take out this 10 millimeter brake line and it came out a lot easier than those sides if you were watching you saw bolt out strut out and there it is again wet so not only is this job plus because they are bad but it is a plus because you know we're putting something good in